Hey, how's it going, Arcadic family? I got something real special for you today. Today we are with Carlos Castillo. We're gonna be building a scaffold. The reason why is because when you get into the industry of welding, not only do you have to know about welding, but you'll have to get into these working platforms on different levels, so it's important for you to be familiar with it and what you need to know that involves safety around it. Now, Carlos, real quick, what, what type of tools do you need to be a scaffold builder? Well, first of all, we need a ratchet, seven eighths, we also got a hammer, and, and then we got a level, yeah, and a pair of clients. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So with this small amount of tools, you can actually become a hand. Uh, I, I know a lot of you breaking out of welding school or trying to figure out what's your next move. If you're not the best, most talented, and can't pass a weld test quite yet, if you gather these tools, have the willingness to work, there's many, many, many companies looking to hire entry-level helpers. On that, just because I know a lot of people want to know roughly about what do they start a helper at out there on the field? Uh, they normally start them at between 14 to 16, 17 dollars an hour. And you get a lot of hours, am I right? Yeah. With that said, you, do you, and just a question, do you think it's easier to find a job when you have a job, especially if you're on a job relating to the type of work you want to do eventually? Uh, yeah. You awesome, can. awesome, awesome. Now let's get to it. So right now, what my boy Carlos is gonna do, he's gonna put the little level to make sure this frame is level, plumb is square. He used this as a cheat to make sure it's nice and lined up. And as long as it's level, we'll be able to proceed. Thank you, Carlos. There you guys have it. That's another scaffold built. On the next episode, we'll be able to show you how to properly set up a hoop to prevent any wind block from affecting your welds. Also, we're gonna have a weld simulated up there uh, for you guys that never welded on a scaffold and what to expect as you do weld on a scaffold. With that said, if you're on the job site, always make sure there's a tag on the scaffold. Make sure it's signed off. Always check the scaffold. Make sure it's safe and secure for you and stay safe out there till next time what's going on my arcadic family as you can see we got our hooch up uh i wrapped it around with a, a fireproof tarp to prevent the wind from uh affecting my weld uh weld zone and today we're going to be welding on a short hood today this beautiful machine used to be a gas machine now it's a diesel conversion i have the reason why i'm gonna use this machine is because i get that question a lot can i can i weld tig with my short hood, the answer is absolutely. Let's go.
All right, guys, whenever working on the elevated platform, especially at work, you definitely want to check the scaffold tag to see if it's been updated. It looks good. Usually if they have a green scaffold tag, it means good. If it's yellow, you got to read the instruction on why or what's the hazards up there. And if, it re if it's red or missing, don't climb that scaffold, all right? Let's go. What's going on guys? Now you're inside the hooch. This is a great place to work. Uh, make sure you have a nice clean work surface, run your leads in a place where they're not in your way. Make sure you're 100% tied off. And throughout the time you work on an elevated platform, make sure you're tied off. With that said, make sure you have your ground on your workpiece. This is again a simulation. In the, in the field, we'll put up some pictures on how it might look like in the field, but this is simulation of how it's gonna be on the workforce. And uh, we're gonna do this eight inch schedule 40 pipe. It should be pretty easy, guys. Let's go for it. guys the root looks extremely good on the inside however I do have one little spot as you can see right in here where it's a little heavy typically you're able to see through the root it did melt on both sides but I just feel it's a little heavy in order to repair that what I would do is put the TIG rig right about where I think it might be strike it Wait for it. Now with that said, Now remember guys, always feather your stops and starts that way when you come right into it, that puddle continuously melt as if it were one.
right. Arc Addicts just finished the route on this 8 inch. Went ahead, turned the machine up 20 to do the hot pass. In this hot pass, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna bring my TIG rig in this position where it's facing me. Or if you can't, couldn't see this, I'm gonna bring it facing me this way until I get about seven o'clock. Now I'm gonna slowly transition back to going to normal. Hope that tip helps a lot of people struggling with that bottom of that 5G. A lot of people struggle on the bottom because they want to bring their, and that to me is very uncomfortable. So the way I adapted was just like this. All right guys, I just finished that hot pass and a bottle of water. With that said, when it's very hot in this, in this environment you'll be working on, remember to stay hydrated. Keep your mind clear, take a moment to breathe. Let's game plan this thing. We're gonna run two beads, one on the left side and one on the right side to completely fill out this, flush out this eight inch pipe. Let's go with it. Arc, arc addicts were completely flush on the pipe all the way around. 
I'm ready to go ahead and put that cap bead. What I'm going to do is try to go just a little bit past the landing over to the right and come back. Always focus it and sing on the left side. That way when I go through with the second pass, I'll be able to cover it up really, really nice. Let's go for it, guys. There you go, my Arc Attic family. Another video shot for you guys. Thank you for liking, subscribing to our channel. If you have any further questions, we're here for you. Remember, in this industry, there's different opportunities, different ways to go about welding. But if there's any content that I can have and build for you guys, please let me know what you'd like to see. I know there's one particular uh, member of our, our Arc Attic family that wants to see that 6010, 7018 non-restriction. That's coming up next. With that said, stay tuned till next time. Guys.